Welcome back to Big Dan's Air Guns Reviews. First thing I'll say, apologies if you hear any weird noises going off. The wind is a bit rough today and the barn is making all manner of demonic sounds. On top of this, there is a festival going on at the pub down the road. So if you hear anything like uh, Robbie Williams going off and reenacted quite poorly, it's probably someone a bit intoxicated down there. So I promise you it's not me. It's probably someone, to be fair, making a much better job of it. So. Reximex Lyra is right in front of us right now. Why don't we have a look at the gun? And as per usual, we're going to test it for accuracy, power, consistency, and also we're going to look at the features and handling and such like that. So then, let's move on to features and see what you get with your Lyra. So features, as always, we start off at the rear of the rifle. As you can see, there is a nicely finished rubber recoil pad there. Moving slightly further along, you do have a rather interesting looking cheek piece and the stock is also a rather lovely lump of walnut. If we just pan back there so you can have a little better look at it. It is an ambidextrous stock as well, so lefties rejoice, you can shoot this rifle comfortably. And the design of the underside of the cheek piece there is absolutely begging for a bag support on the back there. So this probably, or we're hoping, should make a pretty damn good target rifle. We'll find out a little bit later on. As we come a bit further forward, you do have some nice checkering on the grip, as you can see there. And this is also duplicated a bit further on in the forestock, as you can see. So nice little bit of detail in there. We'll see what that's like when we actually get to the handling section. As we move further up, we do have a two-stage match type adjustable trigger, which the blade you can see there, the shoe, can also be adjusted up, down, left and right for those who prefer their blade to be a little offset and such. And just in front of that, you can see the manual safety as well, which I do really like. It's right in front of the trigger, but not too close, like some guns have it. But again, we'll talk about that when we get to the handling section. The rifle is a side lever. Not that you can see that at this moment in time, because like an idiot, we're filming this from the wrong side. Um, but hopefully you can see, uh, if I just reach across there, you might see the side lever poking out. We'll see what that's like in the handling section. Now, one slight missed opportunity with this, it's nitpicking though, but, the Reximex Pretensis, which is basically the sister rifle to this, had like its Crowl Reximex. Most Turkish guns have a really unique rail design where it'll accept both sort of Weaver or Picatinny style mounts, but also dovetail at the same time. Now, this one is more a Picatinny sort of rail, you can see on the top there, so your dovetail mounts won't fit. It's a little nitpick, but it's worth mentioning. Obviously the rifle is also a multi-shot as we come down here you can see both the mags in the bag here along with a single shot trail a tray and you've also got a rail for the underside of the rifle on the forestock here so you can fit your bipods and accessories and such like that. As we move up this rifle is not a regulated rifle so you're not going to see a regulator hiding away in there and one thing I do like about these guns or PCPs in general I know a lot of people like a free floating barrel I personally don't and much like the Pretensis and such like that, you have got a barrel band to keep things nice and secure. Bear in mind though, obviously I look at my rifles and think of them as hunting tools more really than target or anything like that. So the fact that you've got that security on there is nice. You've also underneath this thread protector, as the name would imply, you have got half inch UNF thread as well. So you can chuck a silencer on there, go hunting with it and such like that. Another neat little feature as we come back is the power adjuster, which they're kind of hiding slightly with this rifle. You can see that there. You can only really see half of it poking out the top. Rest assured though, there is a adjuster on the other side of the gun, which is much, much easier to get to. You're not just gonna put a, you can see it's like a flathead screwdriver sort of marking in the screw itself. You're not just gonna chuck a flathead in there and try and twist it from this side. You can get to it from the other side. But in general, it's a very well specced gun, especially considering the price. It's comfortably less expensive than even the Reximex Pretensis. So, is this an absolute bargain or just a bit of a buster that you should avoid? Well, let's put it in the shoulder and let's find out. Okay, but before we get to the handling section, we better take a look at these mags. Now, if you've seen any other Reximex rifle or even Crowl to that uh, extent as well, as they use basically the same loading system, you can skip past this and get to the handling section. For those that haven't seen this though, loading the mags is pretty easy. What you're gonna wanna do is this top tray spins clockwise like so. Spin that the whole way around and you should feel that tray coming under spring tension. What you're going to want to do then is hold the tray, the magazine, sorry, in place and just put your middle finger to cover up that hole if you can see that there. What can happen sometimes if you load your pellets is that they can drop straight through and out the other side. Obviously with your finger there, that can't happen. What you're going to want to do is load your first pellet in place like so 
and that will lock that spring under tension so you can shake the mag now basically do what you want with it and it's not going to flick round and you'll have to start all over again with that done all you're going to want to do is load the rest straight through the top like so until the magazine is loaded and basically with that you are done so that's mag loading out of the way not too difficult just remember the uh <laughs> that's going to be mistranslated but the middle finger trick and you'll be absolutely fine so that's the mags loaded let's move on now to handling let's put the rifle in the shoulder and see what we think okay so handling what do we think of the reximex lyra well it's a bit of a weird one the reason why i say that is because when i first saw the sort of not prototype images but the early images of this gun my first thoughts were oh i wonder if that's a pretentious and a lightweight cut down stock maybe even with a shorter barrel and such like that as if to basically me thinking i bet that's a nice light or even lighter i should say version of the pretentious like a hunting pretentious yeah no i got that completely wrong okay first thing i'm going to say again these aren't negatives as such just things to bear in mind if you've made the mistake looking at the pictures as i have it's quite a long gun in fact dare i say it it might even be a, maybe even a bit longer feeling than the pretentious we'll see if we can get two of them out here later on and we'll put them side by side so we can take a look the other thing is it's not a massively ultra lightweight gun either it's definitely there's some weight on the front end in fact hang on let's have a look you know we do the usual balance test we put a hand in the middle and you can see there look i'm even still gripping it on the rear end and you see the nose trying to dive in fact i reckon that balance point there you go now it's trying to come back now it's about bang on if you can see that there the balance point is just forward of the action right in this basically where the four stock starts you can see that little lump there that's pretty much where she balances right there so it favors the front a little bit the other thing i'm going to mention is we've got a pretty hefty scope on here this is the conus pro plus 6 to 24 by 50. awesome bit of kit but even with that which should be bringing the weight back it's not it's still a little bit on the nose just a tad so bear that in mind again not a negative I like underlever spring guns, which I'm used to front heavy guns and heavier guns in general. I actually quite like this. But again, if you're looking for maybe an ultra lightweight walking around the field hunting gun, shoulder one first is all I'd say. Like we said, it's a long old brute as well. It does feel a little bit like a snooker cue. Don't get me wrong, we have got a silencer on the end. That is the Rexamex Silent Force, if you can see that. But that's even with the short version. It feels like a fairly long gun. But again, not necessarily a negative. You can get used to it. And even if you was to use it hunting, it's not like a big unsupported barrel on the front end. You have got the barrel band there, which I understand uh, they're a little bit of a, a Marmite thing. Some hate them, some love them. I personally quite like them. I like my barrel secure. And to be fair, the difference between a actual restrained, we'll call it barrel, and a free floating one in sub 12, in my testing at least, of course yours may vary, experience may vary, I've never really noticed the difference, to be brutally honest, at least not the ranges that we shoot at anyway. But let's move on to the other bits. So first thing I'll say is the stock is lovely. It really is. Granted, it foregoes the adjustable cheek piece of the pretensis, but at the same time, it's already perfection. For me, at least, anyways. I've got a big old head, so I do like a, uh, a little bit of um, adjustment on the cheek piece. But with this, I can get down with this straight away and I am comfortable. As we mentioned, she's ambidextrous as well, so lefties rejoice. Couple of things I'm gonna mention before we get to the trigger, but trust me, these are worth mentioning. Number one, they have, if I get a bit closer to you there, they have changed the cocking system or cocking lever. If you take a look, this has got a biathlon style um, grip, we'll call it, on the end of the side lever there. The pretensis and your crowls and such, they don't have that. It's just basically a long bar that you have to sometimes awkwardly fiddle with to get to operate. This doesn't have that. This has got a much better system. Other thing I'm gonna say is pressure gauge, far away from the barrel. That is fantastic. The amount of guns that have that a gauge right down the business end on the tip of the air cylinder there is ridiculous. And of course, what do you teach people when they get into shooting? Always treat the gun like it's loaded, never look down the barrel. With those guns, how do I check the pressure? Well, if you'd like to look right next to the barrel, sir, it's madness. And the other thing I'm gonna mention on that subject, the pressure gauge, or not pressure gauge, the fill probe, I should say, is built into the end of the cylinder. I wish more manufacturers would do this, make the fill probes built into the gun and make them a foster fitting like you can see there. It's quick and easy to operate. There's no tools required. You're never, ever, ever, ever gonna lose your probe. 
Kral, if you're listening, yes, when I made the make it correct size comment just then, I am putting a dig into you. Change your built-in probes. They don't fit anything. Anyways, as we move on, let's talk about the important stuff. So, the cocking and loading the mag. So let's try that side lever now. Let's see, have we got any weight? You know, the crowls and such can be a little heavy. It weights up a tiny little bit at the end, but it's comfortably easier to cock than your crowls and such like that. Again, loading the mag, you've got a slot on the back mag there, if you take a look on the back, and you've got the same thing in the breech. So if you just line that up, which I'm, oh no, we actually did all right that time, considering I can't really see it, we did pretty good. Line it up, it will slide in, and you get one last little click when it's right in position. Just like that. Then it's simply a case of returning the side lever. So let's see, how smooth is this? That is quite nice. It did have to seat the mag a little bit then, it wiggled the mag a tad, but that is smooth as silk. And to be fair, again, it could be maybe I didn't just quite line that up correctly. Again, I couldn't really see what I was doing to my credit and the rifle's credit. So then, safety, beautiful. In front of the trigger blade, not too close, which is fantastic. That's what I like. The systems like this we've criticized in the past, I think it was an SMK XS38, where basically the toggle for the safety went pretty much into the blade. It was touching the blade. That I don't like for obvious reasons. This, they've kept it away and it's freaking fantastic. That is the best safety design on any PCP, basically bar none. Just make it a toggle in front of the trigger that blocks that trigger off. Right then, so safety off and let's have a look at that trigger. That's first to second. Not a whole lot of travel, which I actually quite like. There's second. and no creep whatsoever on that second stage. It's also, I wouldn't say light as a feather. I would do have, not a criticism, because it will run in. Triggers, as you know, also have to basically polish themselves in the more you shoot it. You can have a notchy trigger, but you use it not long, maybe half a tin, a tin, and it polishes itself out. The first stage is a little notchy, if you can see that. There's a little bit of movement there, but even so, that second stage is bliss. Let's do that again, so let's try. Yeah, that is lovely to push that pellet into that breech as well. There was a dear little bit of movement. One thing I will say, the gun is loaded with, you can see that, the BSA Gold Stars. Very, very, very similar, shall we say, to your H&N FTTs, which you've got a very solid skirt. And as you know, a solid skirt pellet will give you a little bit of notch sometimes when you load it. That, though, considering that, is smooth as silk, very much like the Pretensis. All right, then, so, little finger test. It's got a little finger. You can see it bounce, bounce off the second. You can see that there. Like I said, there's a little bit of grit. You can feel like a do 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 as you pull on it. Second. Break. No creep, no nothing. That is a lovely bit of kit. It really is. And that trigger, again, that's without adjustment, fresh out the box. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing what we can make this a bit later on if we have a play with the adjustment screw and such like that. And also once those sears run themselves in. So handling wise, I am a massive, massive fan. I think that's a fantastic bit of kit, but just bear in mind, it's maybe not as short or maybe as light as what you might be expecting. Maybe shoulder one before you put your order down if you're thinking of this maybe as a hunting gun. That being said, you can't hunt or target shoot with it if it's only doing about three feet pound. So why don't we whack that chronograph out and see what she's doing.
Okay, so accuracy testing time. We are at our 27 yard mark. You can probably hear and see the wind is being a bit of a bugger today, blowing straight up the field here as it usually does. So we may get some left to right dispersion on the go, but we'll see, you never know. We might get lucky with it. We're gonna be shooting off of a rest, if you can see that just over there, seating down. And the rifle has just been refilled as well after the chronograph report. So we're gonna put a few different pellets through the gun, see which one it likes the best. Then after that, we'll push it on to 45 yards. So, here's where the fun starts. Let's see what the Lyra can do downrange.
Right then, so that's accuracy testing out the way and done with. How did we get on? Well, we've got our rubbishy pellets here. So Crossman Ultra Magnum Premiers, which didn't do very well, although they are a very good pellet. I will say that Crossman's, they're a unique pellet in the way that they never seem to find the middle ground between either amazingly accurate or just outright terrible. Then we have the Beam and the Hollow Point pellets, which are pretty much in everything I've tried them in outright terrible. And the RWS Super Point Strike, or Norma Super Point Strike, I should say. These can actually do very, very well, despite the fact there's a stigma about pointed pellets. And I do intend to do a video on that pretty soon, if I can. Yeah, they did all right, but not exactly fantastic, is it, to be honest? Plenty of spring guns, even budget ones, would probably do much, much better than that. Then we get into the OK groups. These are groups where, if the gun was leaded into these pellets, it might get better. So this is RWS Superfield, where it's almost a 20 pence group with that coin there. We can move it down and you can see the main cluster there easily sits under that. In fact, the main cluster is probably almost five pence group, to be honest. As we come across Barracuda Match, again, similar story. Not, maybe just about under a 20 pence piece, but it's a little bit scattered. Then we get to the good stuff. So, JSB Exact Heavy Diablo, if you can see that there. Sadly, I don't have a five pence piece with me at the minute, but there's a 20 pence next to it there. I think it's easy to say that would be sub five pence. As we come along, yes, the SMK Spitfires have done it again. They do love Reximex barrels for some reason. So you can see there, I mean, 20 pence is there even any point in bothering. I mean, look, it's ginormous compared to it. It's easily sub five pence. And then we come along again to JSB Exact Express. Now we have one little flyer, which I'm willing to bet is me, 100%. But then the other four shot cluster, that is an express pellet sitting in the group there. So very, very accurate. And as we come along, we've also got the Norma Golden Trophy FTs, no flyers whatsoever. And again, that is an express exact JSB sitting in there. And again, I think it's quite easy to say pellet on pellet on pellet with those. So what we're gonna do, we've seen what she likes at 27-ish. We're gonna push it now to 45. We can see hopefully the piece of wood leaning up back there and we're going to do the test again now the wind is not great in fact i think i'm going to get slightly saturated in a minute as i'm doing this but we move on anyway it's got to be done this gun gets no special treatment she's going to have to do the long run as well so the question is will i be left saying simply the best like tina turner or will i be a bit like tom jones singing why 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 delira Okay, so final verdict of the Reximex Lyra. What do we think? Well, as we always say, no gun's perfect, so we'll get the negatives out the way first. First thing is, as we may have mentioned earlier, if you're expecting this as I thought it was, even I'll put my hands up to this, I was expecting it to be a sort of cut down pretensis with a slightly leaner stock, gonna be a bit lighter, maybe, and don't be wrong, the pretensis is not a heavy feeling gun at all. Uh, if you've seen our video on that, I think I do say it's a big gun, but it feels not like a featherweight, but a, a light, average, light sort of balanced rifle. 
This is not. This is, I think they know it's going to be more of a bench rest sort of rifle more than anything else. It's a bit nose heavy, which does keep it nice and stable in the rest, um, but there is a bit of weight there as well, so it might not be your ideal hunting gun. That said, you have got sling studs built into the rifle as standard as you can see, so no need to drill into your stock. If you do want to take it hunting, which I'm absolutely more than confident it will blast bunnies at all sorts of ranges you want to take it to, you can put your sling on there, which will obviously ease the burden of carrying the rifle a little bit. The other thing I'm going to say is the single shot tray. Right, now this, I've not actually had many issues with it. It's this, with other guns, I'll put it that way. With the Rexivix Ixia, which uses a very similar single shot tray to this, I didn't really have any major niggles at all. With this one though, I had a lot of pellets back flipping and all sorts as I'm trying to load them into the breech. And the issue is the channel of the single shot tray itself it's too deep. There's too much room in there for that pellet to slide up and down, back flip, move, you name it. And because of that, occasionally you do. Where the weight's in the nose of the pellet, it'll flop over, all sorts. The main tactic is to load it on the side of the tray. You've got like a little ramp, and then the bit where it drops into the, um, the breech, we can slide it in. Just roll it with your finger into there, then close it up, and then close your side lever. It's a bit of a faff, to be fair. If they could redesign that, maybe tighten up that channel just a little bit, it would be better. But is it the end of the day? Not really. Um, to be fair with you, negative wise, that's pretty much it. The only thing I've got really is a nitpick and it was I wish they used the sort of uh, dual rail system that they've got on the Pretensis and some of the Crowls and such like that where you can fit dovetail and your Picatinny sort of weaver style rails as well. Whereas this one is purely, as you can see that, your Picatinny weaver style rail so dovetail mounts won't fit. It's not really worth mentioning, it's a nitpick. Again, you know we tend to be a bit overly negative on this channel. But that's pretty much it. So now we move into the positives. So, the good stuff. Number one, the more I look at it, as weird as this may seem, especially coming from a Springer guy, the more I look at it, the sexier that's starting to look at look um, to me. On top of that, the grain on this particular model is, look at that through that cheek piece there. That is stunning as it goes into the grip. Bear in mind this is a cheap gun. That is a lovely bit of walnut on there as well. That's only 350 pound for the rifle. And it is a full power, obviously multi-shot, and as we can tell, and we'll look at in a second, bloody accurate gun to go with it. Um, trigger is a little notchy out of the box, we may have mentioned earlier in the handling section. You can adjust it. To be fair, I've not really had to do anything to it. It's naturally, as we said earlier, it's run in, essentially. It's more or less the sears have polished themselves, and that first stage has gone from being gritty to now being quite lovely and smooth with a crisp second stage break. So I didn't really have to touch it or do too much with it. So now the really good stuff. So we've got consistency and shot count. Well, with this, you can see we've got around, if you can see that there, apologies if you can't, 100 and, we stopped at 113, it probably would have gone on to about 115 shots before it ended up going below 10 feet pounds. Considering this is an unregulated rifle with no bottle and just a cylinder on the front, that's pretty darn impressive. I am quite happy with that. That's more than, I'd say, average easily to what you get with most unregulated guns. Um, on top of this, the consistency was also pretty damn good. In fact, even for the first just 20 shots, or the first three, we had three, if you can see that, apologies if you can't, we had three duplicates, one after the other with the first three shots. And even though up to 20 shots in, we only had a spread of 12 feet per second. And that's from a max fill as well, or 190-ish bar fill anyway, because the burst disc, as you can probably see, staring us in the face there. Um, yeah, 190-ish bar fill, so not quite max. And she went on for 113 and had pretty damn good consistency to go with it, so no major complaints there. In general, it's a lovely bit of kit, but what makes it even better is the accuracy. So we had a couple of odd ones. The best group we had at 27, was the Norma Golden Trophy FTs, which were, now we have a five pence piece to actually compare it to. I mean, look at that. That's a five shot group going through there. Again, 350 pound gun. There's plenty of premium guns that will not match that, even at 27. We also had Spitfires, another freak uh, return to brilliance with a Rexinex gun. The Spitfires also did superbly. If we put the 5P next to that there, you can see easily sub five pence uh, group at 27. At 45, well, we didn't show, or at least we might not be able to, to keep the footage down. The Normas and the Spitfires didn't group all that amazingly, sadly, at the 45-yard mark. However, what did were the JSB Exact Express. You can see here we've got a 20 pence piece. Let's push that up. And that is 20 pence all day long. And it's also not the greatest weather now, to be fair, compared to when we first um, we did the 27-yard mark. 
You probably might even hear the barn squeaking and making all sorts of horrible noises behind me. We need an exorcist around here, I think, for that. But we did get a bit of wind, as you can see, and even so, we got a 20 pence group. In fact, I think I'm pushing my luck here. Let's try the 5p. So it's three through the main cluster, two just off to the left. And darn it, do you know what? That might actually, mm, I'll let you judge that. There's a couple of, I don't know if you can see his little tufty bit there. And the shadow's kind of covering that up. But there's a couple of little tufty bits out the five pence there. I'll let you decide on that one if that's five pence at 45 yards outdoors in the wind. Uh, but then the best group at 45, we had, we got JSB Heavy, which at 25 or 27, I should say, did pretty well. It's still sub 5p if we put that there. That's not too bad at all. It's a little bit uglier because they're all sort of not really touching all that much. In fact, we've made a U shape, if you can see that. But when we get to 45, things look a hell of a lot better. If only I could pick up that 5p piece. We'll put the 5 pence down there. And as you can see, absolutely spot on. In fact, let's get that out of the way for a second. You can see there, that's four shots in more or less one cluster just off to the left there with one flyer. Again, probably the, not the, nothing mechanically wrong with the gun. That's probably the fleshy bit pulling the trigger, I'm sure, or the wind, but we'll say it's me. We've had one shot going off to the right. For again, to just elaborate a little bit and to repeat it, a 350 pound gun. Where I can see this gun doing really, really well, and it's great that they've done this because there's not that many options for this sort of thing, especially on a really tight budget. Entry level bench rest is how I see this rifle. For those wanting to get into competition, don't have a million bucks to spend, let's face it, not all of us do, especially not these days. And they want something that not only really looks the part, which I think this does, the more I look at it, the prettier it seems to be to me, but also want something that absolutely performs as well. And I think the Lyra ticks every single one of those boxes. What I'm gonna leave you with is just to bear in mind, with this review of most reviews, I haven't really had a chance to do pellet testing on head sizes. We've not really leaded the gun in. We put all different lead through the barrel. I will tell the truth without cleaning it first each and every time because then it's going to take even longer to get the reviews out. It'll take days and days and days and days, which will then translate into months and months. For someone who's willing to spend a little bit of time on it that you would do with any gun, I think that this gun would absolutely stack pellets with the right testing and such done on it. But again, that's up for you boys and girls to do watching this. We, sadly, at the, this moment in time anyway, don't have the time for it. But you can see the capability and potential that this rifle absolutely has. I just want to say a massive thank you to the boys and girls at Range Right for sending this, us this rifle for review. It really does mean a lot. And next, we are probably, unless anything else gets in the way first, we're going to be doing the Air Arms TX200 versus HW97 video. So that, I think, is going to be a bit of a controversial one because no matter which one wins, and one will win, make no mistake, I'm going to really upset a large group of people, so we'll see how we get on with that one. But anyways, thank you ever so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.